My name is Thomas. I'm the founder of the project Hoprod Garage. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new app made for us brewers to make the brew day easier. The app is called Brewfather. So, as I mentioned, uh, I have dedicated this video for the app called Brewfather. Um, I have been looking for an app uh, for a long time that will be an app that uh, I'm able to do the whole brew process in, in the same app. Uh, in other words, I don't want to have one app for the recipes, one app for logging uh, from the fermentation process uh, and so on. So I found this app uh, called Brewfather uh, in March, I think. Um, and I started, uh, I contacted the de developer because it was a closed um, uh, beta version of it. So I had to get, get access. Uh, access. So uh, I contacted the developer, Thomas Gangse, and uh, it didn't take many minutes before he granted me some access. Uh, and that was the start of a, a very long chat between me and Thomas. Um, it didn't take so long, uh, long time before I understood that this is the app I've been looking for. Uh, so I think about after two days or something, I was all I was paying the premium uh, version. So I was the first premium user of the app. So that's that's quite cool. Uh, one of the reasons I kind of liked the app was uh, first it looks very good and it's very good to use. Uh, it's it's very self-explanatory uh, when you're navigating inside it. Uh, but I also saw the possibility to maybe get some integrations that I have been waiting for and uh, haven't found any solution for. So uh, in the chat with uh, with Thomas, I um, I asked him if it was possible to to take the uh, the JSON output. Uh, because he could already output the, the whole recipe as a, a JSON file. Uh, so I asked him if it is it possible to send that JSON directly to a web service. And uh, Thomas said that that shouldn't be a that big problem. So and it didn't take very long before he actually had a, a test uh, available for me. So. With the with the help of Node Red as a kind of a middleman, uh, I was able to send the recipe from Brewfather into Node Red. Uh, Node Red kind of converted uh, all the fields I wanted and that I needed uh, to Modbus uh, commands, which were which is uh, talking to my Wago PLC. So um, then I was able to create the recipe using my Mac uh, when I was in the, the brew house uh, during the brew day. I can just find the recipe uh, and the batch. Then I can just press a icon there and it will automatically send all brew steps, the times, the temperatures, the volumes of water that I need, uh, the totals, the, yeah, everything, directly into the, the PLC through Node Red uh, with a push of a button. So, and then I can just set the PLC in uh, auto mode and start the process. So, when that was in place, I knew that this is the app I've been waiting for. Uh, 
some time after that, Thomas started to work on the integration with the digital hydrometer called Tilt. Uh, I'm using those. So uh, I was able to get a, a early test uh, of that integration and it also worked uh, as it should. So now I was starting to get rid of the, the logging of the fermentation as well. Because I've been using Fermentrack for a while. Uh, I was quite pleased with it, but after I think three uh, upgrade crashes that I pull, um, pull down the well, a new upgrade of Fermentrack and everything went down. So I had to set Fermentrack up again from, uh, from the beginning. That happened uh, three times in a row. Uh, I, I got so fed up that I started to look at BrewPyLess. Brew uh, and BrewPyLess got a big um, possibility to, to log externally. Uh, it's, it's not a full API, but uh, the external logging functions are very good. So I asked Thomas again, uh, is it possible for you to uh, make an integration between Brewfather and uh, BrewPyLess? And as last time he says, of course, that shouldn't be a problem. I gave him uh, the link to the documentation for BrewPyLess so we can see how the the file need to or the input into um, uh, Brewfather had to, uh, had to be so. And again, uh, he he put it on his list. He said, but uh, it didn't to, uh, take so so many days before he actually had something going on there as well. So, uh, and I can say that uh, that uh, this is also one of the reasons that I really like this program because I really like the developer because he thinks uh, if. If I'm the customer, uh, if you can say it like that, he thinks customer service, and that's very important. And he's he's also uh, he he knows the the brew process, and it's it's very easy for him to to understand the the feature requests and requirements that we brewers have, but because he's a brewer himself. So, um, and uh, the BrewPyLess integration uh, also uh, in place, I, uh, then I had the possibility to log everything into, uh, into one place. I could combine the, the, the data from BrewPyLess, the temperature in the, in the beer, the temperature in the, in the cabinet. Uh, with the tilt uh, data in the same graph, so working, working as it should and working well, very well. For the tilt integration, I'm using a tilt's own tilt pie image, which they have made uh, to uh, to you for for a download. Then you can just install that. Uh, on a SD card and install it, the card into a Raspberry Pi and you will use a Raspberry Pi as the kind of the logging device for the tilts so you don't use uh, a pad or a phone or something like that to communicate with the tilt uh, you can just use a Raspberry, a Raspberry Pi which is online all the time so very good uh, way of uh, integrating Tilt in, uh, in the setup. Also, uh, when you're using the BrewPyLess, you can uh, integrate uh, the other digital hydrometer called eSpindle. Uh, Thomas has also made a direct integration between BrewFather and uh, eSpindle. Uh, but uh, with the BrewPyLess integration, you can also integrate it using that integration. Um, I have bought uh, its spindle. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm going to integrate it with BrewPyLess because I want to use the 
the possibilities uh, with the uh, uh, Brewpy Less and E-Spindle because you can use the readings from the hydrometer to actually control the, the fermentation chamber. So I have some IDs there. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to use uh, the brew pilot function called auto capping uh, to to close down the fermentation uh, the fermenter uh, and uh, and uh, use the PLC integration to uh, between the ferment, uh, fermentation chamber and the PLC to actually uh, add CO2 uh, during cold crash. So that's an uh, integration I'm going to work on this, uh, this summer. Uh, the last thing uh, that was kind of grayed out in the, in the app when I started using it, using it was um, water adjustments and that with water in place uh, I could have everything in the same app. That was the last thing I was missing to actually throw away the spreadsheets from uh, easy water and brewed water uh, and have everything in one place. So not many days ago uh, he released the water profile and the water adjustments module in the Brewful wrap. I've been testing it in a closed developer version for uh, for some time, not very long, but uh, that also shows how fast he actually get things in place and fixes things that uh, he, he get uh, get feedback on. So um, a big plus for the developer as well. But um, I've. Um, I haven't used it live in at a brew day yet, but I'm going to do that. But I have checked the the calculations in the module uh, up against my previous uh, brews, uh, where I used easy water, and they are more or less spot on. Is uh, when I say more or less, I think actually. Uh, brew fodder is more correct because in the um, in the back end he's using some uh, more advanced uh, formulas for uh, calculating. So I think uh, brew fodder is uh, more correctly than the readings uh, or the calculations from the spreadsheets. So, but uh, soon I will I will do a. Uh, Brew and also using the water profiles from uh, Brew Father. So, with that said, uh, I promised you uh, that I was going to show you the app. Uh, I'm not going to go very deep in the, all the functions, but I'm going to show you the f what kind of possibilities you have, uh, how you set up the integrations. Um, and also uh, a little uh, walkthrough of the new water adjustments module that is, as I said, just released. So let's go for some demos. So this is the main screen in the Brewfather app. Uh, the app is a web app. Uh, that means that it's uh, available. available uh, on all your devices, uh, there's no need to uh, configure a synchronization between the devices and so on. Everything is uh, centralized, uh, and uh, that's uh, the recipes, your inventory, and your profiles, yeah, everything. So no need to fiddle around with the uh, with the synchronization. So, uh, so this is. The main screen when you start the app, uh, notice the version here. If the developer releases a new version, let's say he's releasing 1.2, uh, to upgrade the local cached copy of the app in your browser, 
just press the refresh button a couple of times. It's very important that you press it a couple of times, just not just only once, uh, because then it's uh, maybe not updating it. Then it will update this version number to 1.2 for instance. So on the left side you have all the modules, all the menus uh, for the Brewfather application. Uh, here on the right side, this is the main uh, area for uh, which will update regarding to the selection you are doing here. So now the recipes is selected, so it's showing me my uh, own recipes. Uh, I got three of them uh, here right now. Down here, you'll see a button. Uh, if you press this one, this will update uh, uh, regarding to to the, the selection you are, the module you're in. So for for this view, uh, I got two options. I got one option to import uh, a recipe. Then I can export my recipes from Beersmith in BeerXML or uh, if somebody exports uh, a recipe from their uh, Brewfather installation as a Brewfather JSON, I can import that one. So uh, these I've imported from my Beersmith installation. So you get everything, all the steps, uh, in, uh, all the, um, the hops, everything, uh, all your notes inside the recep uh, recipe is Important. You can also press this to create uh, a new recipe. So um, here you can see how to add the the grain. Uh, here you can add the yeast starters and so on. Here's the hops, uh, the yeast. Yeah, you get the ID. So uh, you can also select the style, what kind of beer are you making. Uh, if it's an American IPA, I can just select this one and you will get the, the style uh, ranges uh, posted here. Everything is red now because I haven't started to add, uh, add grains. So but it will uh, automatically update when you start building the recipe. So I can just remove that one. Uh, one important, yeah, and also uh, this one, you can sort uh, the view here by the name, style, order, uh, type, equi equipment, uh, and so on. Uh, the next one is batches. Uh, you create a database with uh, you store all the recipes and the recipes. Uh, when you create a batch, which which uh, is when you uh, planning a brew day, it will copy the recipe into the batch. So if this uh, this uh, recipe here is for say forty four liters, uh, I can use this. Uh, and create a batch, then I update uh, the volume inside the batch, for instance, 22 liters, uh, and this will still be untouched. So you, you, this is the kind of uh, the templates for your recipes. And when you create a batch and you do modification for that batch only, you're only uh, modifying the values for the for the recipe inside that batch. You're not touching the originals which are in the recipes. So if I go to the batches you will see all my completed batches inside um, uh, Brewfather. So if I go down here, here are four stages of the of, of a beer let's call it that here's the uh, planning stage here i can update uh, for instance the equipment i'm using or the the size of the batch i can do it here 
instead of modifying the recipe every time. As I said, it's making a copy of the original recipe inside here into the into the batch. So uh, here's uh, for instance the batch number. Uh, this is important if you are using tilt because then you need this number. I will uh, talk about that later. So uh, after uh, you're finished planning, you start uh, the brewing. Uh, here are the, all the brew um, steps, the whole recipe, uh, everything you need for the brew day. Uh, here are the values during the uh, brew day, uh, pre post boil volume, uh, pre boil gravity, uh, the, the pH and so on. Uh, also how much you transferred for boil uh, and, and so on. So you can update everything here or you can add your own uh, just for uh, have more logging you can create your own here and you can create uh, a, a log uh, so instead of writing in your uh, paper version of the brew log you can uh, just create log items inside the brew folder after the brew day is over uh, you start the fermentation and uh, this is a previous uh, and also uh, not a good graph because I installed the brew pile less integration in the middle of the fermentation so this is the log from the from brew pile less and uh, this is from tilt so when the, the fermentation is done you just uh, change the status uh, of the batch to completed uh, here you can rate it, uh, give it your taste notes, uh, and also uh, update uh, same values if you want, or add the uh, item for the log and so on. So uh, this is the call, call it uh, the, the life of a, of a batch from the start to the end. Uh, the next one is uh, inventory. Here we can you can have an inventory of all your um, all your grains, all your hops, uh, everything, all the water adjustment uh, chemicals, your yeast. Um, you, I, I'm not using this one at the time, but uh, I'm thinking of doing it uh, just to keep a track on when I'm planning a brew day that I'm sure that I have everything I need for it. But then you need to be very precise. So if you're buying some uh, hops, you need to uh, update the inventory. So if you go in here, uh, the default view will always show everything. You can, of course, uh, search here. So, um, Caps lock like that. So if I bought uh, 25 kilos like this, you will see that. Uh, did I update it? Yeah. It will always show uh, the uh, the things you have set that you have uh, anything uh, in the inventory on top. You can also press this just to show the, the things you have uh, and of course uh, you don't have to update this but there's a possibility to do it. Uh, the same for the hops. Uh, if you add something that isn't here you can uh, add it yourself. Uh, the name um, what kind of unit, is it in teaspoons, is it a cup, a package, whatever. When do you add it? Just select that. Uh, at what time do you add it? What is it? So uh, just 
enter anything that you are missing uh, for yourself. So very very nice. Uh, yeah, the same for for yeasts. Uh, the next is the profiles. Uh, the first one here is equipment. Uh, the brew father comes with uh, some pre-installed uh, grandfather grandfather profiles, and you can of course uh, enter your own. So, if I go into this one, you have you can enter boil time, uh, the batch volume, how much into the fermenter. Uh, you can calculate the boil volume, uh, it will calculate the pre-boil, etc. Uh, you can enter the dead space uh, in the mash tun, uh, how much is the loss in the fermenter, how much is the uh, trub and chiller loss, how much is in the, in the bottom of the kettle and inside the chiller after you have transferred it to the fermenter. Uh, you can also update the efficiency for a brew house. This is a thing you have to tune after using it. So uh, the default here is 70, I think. So you have to, to, to update this yourself. Um, this is not my latest profile. I'm now at 84 with my system. So, and also down here, if you need to add uh, or customize the formula calculating the mash water or the sparge water you're f uh, you're free to do it here these are all uh, the fields available um, uh, to use you, this as you can see it's kind of grayed out because this is the main um, formula but you can you can enter this and you can uh, add uh, 1.5 liters uh, for for any reason uh, to the mesh formula so you're free to fine-tune everything here uh, so it's very very easy to make the recipe uh, kind of calculations and, and as precise as possible so um, also when you have a profile you can go in here and press the star and this will be your default profile for your new um, recipes and your new batches. So, and you can see which one is uh, as a default uh, on the on the main screen here. Uh, for the mash, there are some pre-installed mash profiles uh, and you're of course free to build your own if you're using uh, and a special profiles for your system or, or your way of brewing but um, as you can see here you can add steps to the existing profiles or you can modify the, the steps for the existing profiles uh, you can change the type of step I'm using these two uh, in my automated system to, to uh, if I select infusion uh, my PLC will not start recirc uh, recirculation of the pump. If I select temperature, it will uh, circulate with using the pump. So, but uh, you're free to, uh, to do it your own way. But I'm I'm using these uh, inside my logics in my program in the PLC. So that's my way of using it. So, but you get the idea. Um, so, and you can also insert uh, how much time does it take to reach the temperature and, and so on. So, um, and, uh, and here you can have the ramp time and uh, here's the step time. So it's quite, quite easy. Uh, the same for the fermentation profile and uh, this is not for controlling it i hope it will be a possibility to to use these fermentation profiles uh, controlling the brew pile less which is an integration in uh, brew father 
but uh, it's not possible at the time. I think uh, there need to be some changes in Brewpy less to be able to to control it with the things inside here. But uh, so this is more than a more a, a, a call it a, a template for you or a or a document to f to be sure that you're doing. Uh, Call it a fermentation recipe, so you will use this as a, a guide for 10 degrees in four days, just to look it up if you're not uh, not sure. So, but you need to kind of keep track here uh, manually. So, the last one is uh, it's the water profiles. I will uh, go through this a uh, little bit later when I'm showing you the how you do it in the in the batch or in the in the recipe. But here you can add your own water profile. I have one. Uh, it's not entered here in this uh, version of Brewfather, but I I have a profile for my water after my water filter inside the garage, so so I can use as a source when I'm uh, calculating the, the water adjustments. So, but here you can also make your own style uh, profiles for the water styles. Uh, so, uh, everything is done under this one. So, all profile things are uh, in one place. Also here you can as uh, in equipment, you can select the default profile uh, for all recipes and batches. Uh, so it will use that when you, when you create a new one. Uh, here's a style guide. guide. Um, there are a lot of them. So you can just, of course, search. And when you open it, you will have uh, some uh, yeah, the, the, you can read about the profile, uh, everything. You will see the rain, uh, ranges uh, for all uh, all things inside a profile. So uh, I, B, U, F, uh, define gravity and so on. So uh, just clear it here. Up here on the book. If you press this one, you can select which profile or the style guidelines is going to use. So for Norwegians, we can we have a Nordbrig, uh, so we can select this one, also a Swedish one, and and then we, it will also include these style uh, guidelines in this uh, in this view. So, but um, yeah. Uh, and you are using these when you are creating or tuning the recipes uh, you're selecting the, the style of beer and it will show you if you're uh, inside the range of the style or uh, or if you need to do any, any changes. Further on, tools. Here are some uh, neat tools during a brew day or uh, whenever. Uh, First one calculates the alcohol uh, by entering the original gravity and the final gravity. It will uh, calculate it. So it will also show the Plato readings. So um, a neat one. Uh, here's a calculator for uh, when pitching yeast. Uh, how many packages do you need? Uh, you enter the manufacturer date, uh, what kind of uh, a, uh, beer are you making? Is it a dry yeast? Is it a liquid yeast? Uh, so on. And it will calculate here how many packages you need. You can also use this to create a yeast starter. So I'm starting with one package and this will create a two liter uh, starter for me. I can also uh, modify the, 
the, the size if I want but um, if we do it like this it will calculate it automatic automatically so and also if I'm using two packages let's see it will automatically update it so uh, a good thing to, to use when working and calculating yeast so this is uh, for converting if you have a refractometer that is only uh, reading bricks you can calculate the, the, the gravity uh, by entering the bricks value here so if it says 14 it's 1055 uh, if you during the uh, brew day see that you need to uh, correct the gravity you take a, a gravity reading during the boil you will uh, calculate and uh, you only have 10 minutes left and you're way off uh, you can enter the current gravity that you took a reading of the gravity you want uh, when it's finished how much is inside the kettle um, and how many minutes left then you can uh, it can calculate how much uh, water you need to add or how mo much more you need to boil to get the correct uh, gravity the same here if you not the same but uh, if you're uh, taking a hydrometer reading uh, and you're not at the calibrated 20 degrees you can enter the, the, the gravity reading uh, and the temperature of the vert then it will update and uh, taking uh, and up against uh, the temperature so if it's too cold or too hot it will uh, calibrate it uh, so it will show it's uh, almost a sec exact uh, the correct volume uh, reading for the hydrometer and here you can do uh, calculations of uh, carbonation you select the beer type or the beer style it will show the range that uh, that style uh, should be in um, it will take the lowest value uh, as a default but you can just enter 2.5 or 2.8 or whatever that you, you want uh, the volume that you're going to bottle the temperature where the bottles are uh, going to be stored during carbonation and this is of course when we have selected sugar uh, as a carbonation uh, for carbonating with sugar uh, so you need to add 121 grams of table sugar uh, to co correctly uh, carbonate for 2.4 if you're doing kegs you can just select keg here uh, the same the temperature inside the, the freezer or the fridge that you store the keg during carbonation Here's the, the PSI you need to set on the, on the, the bottle with CO2 and uh, 9.3 PSI at 4 degrees for approximately one week. So if you're doing 8 uh, degrees, uh, storing it at 8, you will see it automatically updates to 12.2 PSI for a week. So and also if it's is it colder and uh, it will be lower so um, a good tool to, to calculate and uh, be sure that you carbonate the correct way so that was the last of the tools inside here are your settings um, you can set some standard settings some general things uh, selecting your units especially for if you're not in Europe or Norway uh, you can use Fahrenheit and, and some gallons and so on um, just 
updates it in under settings. Under utility, you find all the integrations. This is the tilt hydrometer. Uh, I'm using two of those. Uh, this cloud URL is the URL you go going to uh, enter in the Tilt Pi image running on Raspberry Pi or your Tilt uh, app on your iPad or another tablet or your phone if you're using that. I highly recommend, uh, recommend using a, a Raspberry Pi with the, the Tilt Pi integration, uh, the image. So then you use this cloud URL, uh, enter that into the, the Tilt Pi and uh, set it for 15 minutes, updating, uh, updating every 15 minutes. And you need, every time you're brewing and uh, fermenting a new beer, you have to take the batch number of your batch and update the Tilt Pi uh, configuration. So go into the Tilt Pi and uh, for the next batch share it's 22. I need to go into Tilt Pi and enter the batch, uh, the beer name as 22. Just enter 22 in Tilt Pi. This URL never, you don't need to update this one. Uh, it also supports the hydrometer called eSpindle. Uh, this is for um, direct integration with the eSpindle. You can also integrate the eSpindle using the BrewPy Less integration. I'm using BrewPy Less. Uh, it's the same here. You go in and enter this URL in the BrewPy Less uh, logging setting up here. And you can see that yeah, the data type data type should be application JSON. This isn't uh, this is blank uh, when you uh, when default. And also here's the format. This is a long, just select uh, Control A or uh, uh, to select everything, and you just paste it in here. Then you the only thing you need to update if you have more uh, group ILS uh, control chambers is this fermenter 2. So I've got two of them. So I've got one of them, my group ILS says fermenter 1, and this one is fermenter 2. The URL uh, is the same for both, uh, but they start to log every 900 seconds and they log to Brewfather and they automatically uh, appear inside Brewfather after they have start logging. So it uses this ID to, uh, to separate them uh, inside Brewfather. So, and just toggle these buttons if you don't use Tilt or, uh, or Brewpy less or so on. Here's uh, the custom endpoint API. Uh, I'm used. This is the first integration that uh, I got Thomas to 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 make. I use this for sending uh, the JSON file, uh, the recipe, onto my uh, Vago PLC uh, with all the brew steps uh, needed. So I can just start automation, and uh, the brew system is doing it, uh, doing everything itself. So this is the URL which uh, it's doing a post, a JSON post, a post to. So just uh, I'm using Node Red as an integration here, converting from JSON to Modbus, which is the Vago uh, kind of protocol. Uh, so I'm converting all the JSON uh, values to uh, variables in the Modbus using a, a node red installation in between. So also if you're not using this one just toggle this is disabled at, as default. But when you enable this you will see that if I go into a batch it's a paper plane here. So if I press this one it will automatically send the recipe to my PLC. In other words it's sending it to the URL inside here. So that was settings. 
here's uh, your account info. Uh, it shows that uh, I'm a premium user. If you're not, it will uh, ask if you want to be one. Uh, you can just press it and you will get into the, the possibility to subscribe. You can also click here and uh, change your password and so on if you're using a, a blue folder username and password and not Google or uh, Facebook. Here's uh, some uh, info about Brewfather, uh, some contact information and the terms of using Brewfather. So that was everything here. We can try to create a new batch. Uh, I can take this recipe from uh, Jonas Walker. This is a recipe I'm going to brew. My, this will be my next brew. So I'm not doing it planning it uh, finished here now but uh, as, a, as a demo so I just select this one so I can do some uh, modifications here if I want or I can just press this button up here and it will create a batch and you can see now I got a planned batch and as I mentioned earlier now this is a copy of the Ace of Spades uh, recipe so Everything I'm modifying on this one won't change anything on the original recipe in under recipes. So that's an important thing to know. So we'll, you will always keep your original recipes, your base recipes, untouched if you don't. If if there are something you need to change for all batches you're doing, you do change the recipe here. But if you like this, um. I'm going inside and check uh, edit on the recipe. I'm editing the copy. So I take edit. I'm not making 22 liters, I'm making 44. Save. Do you want to scale the recipe? Yes, please. If you see here, 5.42. Yes, 10.84. Everything is uh, updated. So uh, I can also uh, change the style if I want. There are no black IPA style, I think. So it says Imperial. Uh, that's the reason the uh, color is, uh, is outside the, the style. But uh, this is a black IPA anyway. Um, after I scaled it, uh, the IBU is just under 60 not uh, that far away but you can fine-tune it to, to get this to be uh, okay or green inside the range again uh, also uh, I can change things in here if I want and again I'm not changing the original I'm just changing this batch only uh, then uh, we can take the water profile thing It's down in the recipe in uh, all the way in the bottom. I can just press this calculator button Then it's taking all the grains from the recipe uh, It selects if it's if it's a base it's a crystal malt it's a roasted malt with all the values down here, everything is uh, in place. You don't have to enter this one as I've been doing lately in the Easy Water spreadsheet. Uh, you have to manually go in and enter all these values. So, but here you don't need to do that. You get the mash water volume, you get the sparge water volume. Here's the, the source uh, and here you can go in and select your own water profile, which is inside your brew house. I haven't installed my uh, my own profile, but we can say this is the one. Uh, save. This is the source. Now I can, it remembers from an earlier test there, but I can go in and change the target also. It's, uh, it's important to select the correct style to have these uh, ranges correctly. But change the target. Just let us pick one. I take the NIPA. So 
uh, and this recipe got already the the amounts of uh, salts uh, etc the water agents so but then we can just press auto as you can see it automatically calculates the source against the target you will see that there are one value here that is uh, off but uh, this is I just selected the NIPA profile for the for the black IPA so that's quite uh, off let's say that so and I select the pale ale again just to uh, select another one so now everything here is green you can fine-tune this if you want uh, and you can here here's the mash um, agents you need to, to add here's the sparge if you don't do uh, sp uh, adjustments of the sparge just um, select this one it will automatically add everything to the to the mesh also for this uh, I don't have a, a problem uh, with a too high pH but just to show it quickly if this was way too high it will and I want to add as, uh, acid for the mesh uh, here you can select the type of uh, acid you're using the lactic it will automatically update the pH as you can see here when I select the amount so um, very very easy to, uh, to fine-tune everything uh, when you're done just press save adjustments and it will automatically update the recipe with your, uh, your agents isn't that cool this is the last feature that uh the last thing i was missing inside brewfather and he just released it uh, and uh, i haven't used it during a brew day i will do very soon but i have double checked uh, my easy water calculations for for my previous batches uh, up against the, this calculation and it's uh, it's very very close and as I have mentioned earlier when I say very very close this is because um, he's using some other formulas for the calculation so I think this is more correct than uh, what I've been using before so when everything here is um, uh, as it should just click save and you have changed the recipe for this batch I'm saying this time after time just that uh, you know it's it, you're working with copies of the recipes so you're not going to end up destroying your recipe the original recipe if you're playing around inside the batch then you start brewing you enter all the, the values during the brew day uh, you can take add notes here you have all your, the brew steps everything uh, you're finished with the brew day you start fermenting here you can attach the devices uh, for this I'm using the tilt hydrometer I'm also using brew pilots so I don't care about the temperature from the tilt I just unselect this one I will use my big chamber which is the fermenter one then I can just go in here and say I'm not using the e spindle integration which you can integrate with brew pilots because I'm using the tilt now I remove this one uh, I don't want the room temperature from the brew pilots uh, I don't have a sensor for that anyway so but I maybe I just want the beer temperature then I select this one or I want also the fridge I uh, select these two okay and then I press attach and it will attach my uh, brew pileless chamber to this batch and as I mentioned you need to go into the tilt application and 
change the name of the bear inside there to 22. It's always explaining it in uh, inside when you configure it here. So just type 22 in the name inside the, the tilt pi uh, image that you um, or uh, the configuration there or inside the tilt uh, application on your pad or phone. So these when you creating more group ILS chambers and you call them fermented tree four five six uh, and so on it will automatically uh, appear here so you can attach them if you attach a fermenter that it's already attached to another batch it will detach it from the other one and attach it to this one so and here as you can see you can select um, what you want to have inside the graph and after some minutes uh, it's starting to draw the the log the, the graph here with the, the devices you selected and when it's done you can update some more things here you can change the combination um, uh, settings inside here uh, you will see the same um, calculations as in the calculator in the tools uh, so but this is for dispatch and when it's fun, uh, when it's done you can rate it I know that uh, Jonas uh, black the black IPA from Jonas is very good so I'm rating it up here but it's not uh, it isn't that sure that uh, it's the same for my batch, but uh, his batch was uh, his his brew was very very good. So yeah, you can have some taste notes and yeah, all the uh, the values uh, regarding to this batch you can see and enter here. So you can print it if you want. Uh, you can uh, export it to bear XML uh, and of course transfer when in. In planning mode, you can transfer or in brewing mode. You can transfer it to a custom URL as I'm doing. So now it's under completed. So as I mentioned, this button it's updating re, uh, to the view you're in. So now it's some completely different uh, values uh, or or commands I can use uh, I can press this one delete it will delete this test batch so yeah I think uh, I have covered uh, the most of it uh, if you have any questions uh, if I forgot to show something or didn't explain it uh, that well please comment in the video below uh, or uh, send me a, a message or comment on the Facebook page for Hop Rod Garage. Uh, and also you can uh, use the um, Brewfather uh, page and get help from the developer himself uh, and other users from Brewfather. So yeah, that's it. And uh, thanks for watching this demo. Yes. That was uh, the demo of the Brewfather app. Uh, I'm not sponsored to show you this. Uh, I'm actually, as I mentioned, the first paying premium user of it. Uh, this is my personal ideas and thoughts of this app and my experience with it. Uh, I think it's really, really good. Uh, I really like the application and I really like uh, the developer behind it because uh, as I said he thinks about the customer uh, and he knows what he's doing so uh, if you're looking for a application for making recipes this is it so uh, give it a try and uh, comment below if you have any thoughts or comments also if you 
you're not uh, subscribing to my channel please do uh, push the subscribe button below also push that little bell down there uh, and you will get notified when I'm uh, releasing a new video um, and uh, if you will like this video give me a thumbs up so that's it guys for now uh, and until next time cheers <laughs>